Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I will tell you some new, amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. Our first story is, Neighbor doesn't respect our property, so I made a surprise. I lived in an apartment building for a couple of years. This building was a part of a larger condo association. It can be called an HOA. There are townhomes and some buildings with apartments, all of which you could own. I rented from a landlord. The building I was in had two one-bedroom apartments in the front, about 900 square feet, and two two-bedroom apartments in the back, about 1,200 square feet. This was repeated for three floors, so 12 apartments in total. I had one of the bedrooms on the first floor, where it was me, a 23-year-old male at the time, and my dog. The tenants were a mix of older folks and younger professionals like myself. There was also a middle-aged alcoholic woman that was the pain in everyone's A. About a week after I'd moved in, it was about 1 a.m., and suddenly, over the sound of my own TV, I hear Aerosmith blasting. After a quick process of elimination, I determine it's the drunk upstairs. I walk upstairs and, not wanting to pay anyone off, decide to politely knock on the door and ask her to turn it down. After knocking a couple of times, there was no answer. I retreat back to my apartment, throw some headphones in, and go to sleep. The next day, upon returning from work, I decided to go knock on the door to see if she was home. She answered, and I politely asked her to try to keep the music down after 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. Don't worry about Friday or Saturday, because I'll be out or hammered and it won't matter. Over the course of the next few weeks, everything goes smoothly. Some other neighbors warn me that it will happen again, and she's been like this since she moved in. I say shame on them for never trying to do anything about it. They say, you'll see. Sure enough, a couple nights later, Aerosmith is blasting at 3 a.m. I go up and knock on the door. She answers the door, clearly hammered, and calls me an a-hole and shuts the door in my face. I go back downstairs and just call the cops. The cops arrive, she's rude to them, and they do nothing but give her a warning. They leave, and she turns the music right back up. They come back, and it's just only another warning. This happens a handful of times after this, and I finally accept defeat. The cops can't or won't help. A few days after this, I hear her in the shower as I'm taking a crap. Her bathroom is right above mine. The light bulb goes off in my head, and I hurry into the basement, where there's some storage area for all tenants, and look for a hot water disconnect. I determine my revenge will be turning her hot water off every time I hear her in the shower above me. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the hot water disconnect. I do find another treasure, though, hidden in a small area behind one of the storage units that you wouldn't even guess was there. A large breaker panel. I open it up and find breakers for the hallway and staircase lights, etc. But wait, there's a breaker for every individual apartment also. My plan is now set and I walk back smirking to my apartment, waiting. Finally, my day has arrived. I wake up at about 2 a.m. and hear Aerosmith. This time, it's music to my ears, though. I grab a flashlight and hurry down the stairs. I find her apartment's breaker and turn it off. I take my victory lap around the basement and walk back up to my apartment. I can hear stomping and screaming, but she can't figure out why her apartment's electricity isn't on, but the lights in the hallway are. I hear her knock on the neighbor's doors, but no one answers. I just smile and go right back to sleep. The next day, I wake up and go turn her power back on. I was working from home that day, and as I sat at my table and returned some emails, I see the electrical service guy arrive. From the bit of conversation I could eavesdrop on, it was clear he had no idea what had happened. 
and thought that she was a little bit crazy. After he left, I saw her carry out all the food in her fridge that had gone bad. As months progressed, every so often she would start blasting the music. I would just go downstairs, cut her power off, and turn it back on hours later. She never picked up on the correlation between her music and losing power somehow. Every time she would call the electrical service guy, I would turn the power back on before he arrived. She would then be charged for his visit and lose money throwing out the contents of her fridge. This worked for two years up until about a week before I moved out and forgot to turn it back on one day, and there was a lock on the breaker box. Update, I did in fact call the police first. The next day, I did talk to my landlord, and there wasn't anything she could do about it. The lady owned her apartment, so when my landlord contacted the condo association, there wasn't much they could do other than send her a letter. Even though other people from the building had also complained, there was no immediate fix to the problem. This neighbor is horrible. It's so stupid to not even open the door. Did she really think that the OP would be that stupid and think that she had disappeared? Good for the OP for coming up with a method to keep her in line and turn off the electricity. It's very funny that the neighbor never understood the connection between her music and turning off the electricity. I also had a similar neighbor who pulled similar antics, and only the police could teach him a lesson, who, by the way, did not really want to go because neighbor wars are not our job. But that's a whole other topic. And the second story is, HOA finds me every day, but I'm not part of the HOA. When I first bought my house, which is located near the HOA, but not part of it, everything was fine. The HOA had an old president who not only respected the people living under his jurisdiction, but also respected everyone living in the neighborhoods adjacent to the HOA. Very often, people hired by the HOA for themselves helped me solve some problems. For example, we have a common pipe system, so often plumbing professionals hired by the HOA would come to me to fix my pipes. On the one hand, if my system breaks down, then at least some of the people in the HOA's own pipe system will not work properly either, so it's beneficial for them to help with my pipes, but on the other hand, I think they helped me because I'm respected by many in the neighborhood, because I'm an old-timer and I come to the aid of anyone who needs it. Even though I'm an old man, I still have so much energy that I can at least share it. But times change, and then a new president appeared in the HOA. Her name was Karen. What else could it be? Immediately, everything began to change for the worse. Because if all the previous presidents thought about how to make our neighborhood better, this Karen thought about how to earn as much money as possible so that her pocket would be finally full to the brim. The HOA, headed by this lady, began to invent many new prohibitions so that they could fine everyone who would even think about the HOA. In general, at first, only those people who were part of the HOA received fines. But then people who'd live just next to this HOA started receiving fines. I asked my neighbors, and no one had ever received any fines before. The maximum you could get was a warning. When I received the first fine, I just couldn't believe my eyes. The fine stated that I had violated the bylaws of the HOA by using my land after 7 p.m. I would like to point out that I never make any noise on my land day or night. I don't like noise myself, and I certainly don't want to disturb anyone else. No one has ever told me how I can use my land and private property before. The fines continued, and it got to the point where I was getting fines every day. There were many more reasons for these fines. At some point, I just couldn't take it anymore. I did everything I could to make them forget about me. I consulted a lawyer, and first I contacted the police. And then after all the procedures, I filed a lawsuit with the court. The result? Karen and her team are no longer in charge of this HOA and are now banned from my property. The next story is Refund for Broken Computer Parts Purchased in Another Store The basic backstory. I'm a computer salesperson. I was a returns desk employee at the time this tale was written. Despite the fact that it frequently serves as a customer service desk, 
There isn't one because all staff members are required to be knowledgeable about every area of their individual departments. The customer service is universal. Additionally, please be aware that, provided the request is reasonable, I am free to be quite flexible with our return policy. I hate working at the returns counter, too. It was a typical retail day on this particular day. The day goes by without a hitch at the store I work at, since it's run quite efficiently. That is, until a youngster approaches my desk an hour before my shift finished, in an attempt to return some computer components. A motherboard, a CPU, and RAM are all included. He doesn't have any of the receipts. However, I can find the transactions in my point-of-sale system without the receipts. Fortunately, he has an account, so I can find the RAM and motherboard. I had no trouble giving him a refund for the RAM. The motherboard, however, had been in use for only 50 days. Although I was in a good mood, our return policy is 30 days. He's a child, after all, and I'm reminded of how perplexing the world was for me when I was his age, which was not that long ago, but feels like a lifetime. I advised him that while I couldn't give him his money back, he could trade it in for a new one or purchase a gift card instead, which was the standard practice for returns outside of 30 days, but within 60. My dad will be upset, so I can't have a gift card. Okay, but since you've already passed the return window, I'm unable to refund your money. A gift card or an exchange are your only options. The teen says, I suppose I'll get a new motherboard then. Which do you prefer? I ask. I suppose the same one. Now that I think about it, I had forgotten the original reason he wanted to return it. Any open product at this point would be returned to the distributor for inspection, thus it was no longer necessary. As it turned out, once he put everything together, his computer stopped functioning, necessitating new parts. Yeah, I have no idea why it isn't working. Okay, do you want me to call a salesman over to bring you another board, or do you want to go around and look for other things? Just give me a new one, and then are you going to give me a refund for the CPU? As I was still quite new at returns, I hadn't yet reached the CPU, and I was completing them one at a time to be sure that I didn't make a mistake. Of course, I have to be cautious when it comes to returns, making sure the item is the right one and all that. But I have to be even more cautious when it comes to CPU returns. I checked the package when I got home, and as soon as I did, I understood why this customer's PC wasn't working. The CPU, or central processing unit, is a tiny square chip that serves as a computer's mental center. Super frail, but incredibly crucial piece of machinery. There may or may not be pins on the bottom of a CPU, depending on the manufacturer, which are necessary for the operation of the CPU and the rest of the computer. They are very easily bent or broken. There just isn't a solid reason for someone to harm a CPU, because it's also very simple to not bend or break them. The CPU of this child, however, appeared to have taken a hammer blow. Well, this explains why your PC isn't working, I said. What? The pins, they've been broken. Nothing on the computer can function with this kind of damage. Oh, so can I send it back? Despite the fact that we were unlikely to accept it back owing to the damage, and the fact that he plainly purchased the CPU more than 30 days ago, I held back from saying anything at first, since I felt horrible for him. I had hoped that management would allow him to exchange it because it was a really pricey CPU. I, therefore, kept hunting for his purchase receipt for this CPU. I reasoned that he had a limited number of transactions, I could simply use sheer force to go through each one at a time. However, I was unable to locate it. None of his receipts included it. I'm having trouble identifying the CPU on your account. Is there another name it might be listed under? We may try my dad's name. His name is Teen's Dad, said the teen. No account appears when I search for his name. I said, uh, your father doesn't appear to have any open accounts. He doesn't have an account, the teen says. I'm the only one that shops here. By this time, I've come to the conclusion that I'm dealing with a teen that is a tad more foolish than the ordinary teen. 
but I maintain my composure and keep going. I make an effort to not differentiate between people depending on their intelligence. I check the transactions using the serial number of the CPU as a last-ditch effort. For a variety of reasons, the cashiers occasionally forget to manually tie transactions to accounts. I couldn't find anything when I scanned the serial number, though, and that was peculiar. I said, did you purchase this at another location or at this site? Different location, said the teen. I'll acknowledge that in order to open the remote search window right away, I should have asked that question earlier. However, it turned out that he had never made a purchase at any of our other locations when I looked it up. He's never shopped anywhere else but my store. Me, hoping to access the more comprehensive central server database because I suspected there might be a problem with my point of sale system, which computer retailer did you purchase this from? Oh, I didn't purchase this from a computer store. Rather, I did it on Amazon, the teen said. I was mute as I simply watched him. I wasn't sure how I ended up in this situation. Why did he believe that we would assume that his CPU, which he purchased from Amazon, was faulty? I consequently questioned, why do you want a refund for a product you didn't even purchase from us? What do you mean? asked the teen. We didn't receive any money from you for this. Amazon gave it to you. As a result, we're unable to reimburse you financially. Here, that is. So, I need my cash back. Your cash is not here. Your cash is with Amazon. Visit Amazon if you want to get paid. So, you're not able to take care of it? No, you didn't pay for that CPU here with money. There's no monetary value associated with that CPU that I can return to you. Can I switch it? A teen asks. I regret not. We do not accept trade-ins. I assumed he was referencing a trade-in. No, I want to exchange it, says the teen. I'm hitting my head against the wall on the inside. How could a teenager fail to comprehend that an item can only be returned to its place of purchase? You would have had to purchase that item here or at one of our other stores in order to make an exchange, but you didn't. It was purchased from Amazon. I'm at my wit's end in regards to helping you. This needs to be returned to Amazon. So you won't assist me? No. I'm pleased that he finally got it at this point because he goes, That's what I believed as he returns with my manager not even a minute later. He was very rude to me and wouldn't let me return this. I need a refund. Sir, please accept my apology. Do you still have the receipt? No, but I purchased it from Amazon last month. That's what he said. I didn't crap you. Why would I give you money for something that you didn't even buy from us? Asked the manager. Are you implying that you won't issue a refund to me? There is nothing I can do for you, including providing a refund. They were very rude to me, called me names, and won't give me a refund for my item, the adolescent screams as they stormed off to the salesman. Not my department, that. When it comes to returns, it's up to them. The adolescent storms off after that and keeps repeating this act over and over again. Over the course of the following 20 minutes, he becomes increasingly furious, to the point where he is hysterically sobbing to the general manager of the store about how unfairly everyone treated him and how he won't give him a refund for his CPU. After that, the general manager approached me and told him to wait. Why won't you give him a CPU refund? How old is it? It doesn't really matter to me at that point. He made no purchases from us. He purchased it from Amazon. Ask him. The general manager did just that. The general manager essentially asked the teen why he believed that we would accept it and offer him a refund after learning that the teen had, in fact, purchased the CPU from Amazon. The teen said that a member of the repairs team had assured him that we would look after him. The technician simply claimed that I was in charge of returns. He did not claim that I would absolutely, positively give the child a refund. Therefore, 
This turned out to be a miscommunication or a lie. The teen eventually went away, without a refund and with tears in his eyes. He then claimed in a survey that I had mocked him, dumped his things on the ground, and refused to offer him a refund. We have cameras, though. That review was straight up rejected by my general manager. Dismissing a survey review is incredibly aggravating because it demonstrates how absurd the general manager found the issue to be. This story proves once again that parents need to have a trusting relationship with their children and take an interest in what's going on in their lives. I think the teenager was aware that his parents would obviously get very angry if he had broke that part of the computer, and his thoughts were probably something like this. I spent a bunch of money, of my parents' money, and I broke the part I bought, so they're going to be really angry, so I'm going to go cheat and get the money back from someone else. But then another question arises. Why build a computer yourself in the first place if you know nothing about it? Wouldn't it be better to just go to specialized centers where real professionals can build your computer? You're just a kid. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you soon.